Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. Imagine that you bought a product that said that it does not have a subscription. The company realized that they need to make more money. And once they realize they need to make more money, they push out a firmware update to your device that disables its functionality from working, even on your own local network, unless you decide to pay a subscription fee. Welcome to Future Home. Future Home is a company that makes smart home devices that decided they were not making enough money. And when they went bankrupt, the new owner decided we're going to push a firmware update to all these devices that causes them to no longer work until you pay a subscription fee. True South Park Cable Company material. Hi, Lewis. I know your inbox is an avalanche, so I'll keep it brief and link to the receipts. I'm a former software engineer at Future Home a Norwegian smart home company that sells a Zigbee Z-Wave Hub smart hub and branded Internet of Things devices, like thermostats, sensors, home electric vehicle chargers, and more, installed in over 30,000 households across Norway. Earlier this year, the firm entered bankruptcy protection. After the restructuring, ownership is now split 50-50 between the original owners and a new entity. Within weeks of that split ownership, Future Home announced a mandatory $117 per year platform subscription fee. If an existing customer does not pay by June 26, 2025, the hub will download an update that literally turns off both remote and local app control, all automations, all local API and mosquito broker interface after a short grace period. Every smart device is now downgraded to dumb hardware mode, physical buttons only. Put bluntly, thousands of users will wake up to an expensive plastic brick unless they cough up a ransom. Norwegian Reddit is already on fire over whether this is even legal under EU consumer protection law. It's really difficult to tell that this is actually something that requires a subscription in order to work. When you take a look at their site now, they have this big, infinite, scrolly page kind of site. When I scroll down, I get to 50,000 plus people connected to our smart hubs. It gives you the price for installation. But in order to figure out that this is a subscription, you have to click over here to this little asterisk. So you have the big asterisk over here, the big price, and then you got to go down here and like do this if you're getting to be my age in order to see it. One of the things you'll notice if you click around their website is that the word subscribe doesn't even appear on several of these pages. You have to go to their FAQ to figure out that it is a subscription product and that they are rolling out a subscription fee. Next up, we're going to be going over Belkin's Wemo series of smart home products. This encompasses everything from light switches, dimmer switches, smart plugs, humidifiers, coffee makers, and more. Items like dimmers and light switches are items that you're having a professional electrician wire into the infrastructure of your house. Items where I would appreciate at the very least having an idea up front of when this item is going to expire and stop functioning as it's supposed to. I want you to pay attention to the way that they've written their notice on their website because words matter and the words they're using are words that are not giving the full story. After cons careful consideration, we've made a difficult decision to end technical support for older Wemo products. Now, when you say that you're ending technical support for a product, as somebody who was born in the 80s, I interpret that as you're not going to fix it anymore, I'm not going to get firmware updates to it, and I can't call your 1-800 number or email support when the A button doesn't work on my 1994 original Game Boy that I bought. And that's understandable. That's okay. I can't expect Nintendo to provide support for my Game Boy that I bought in 1994. However, that does not mean that you kill my Game Boy when you end technical support for it. That Game Boy still works right now. It's a little wonky, and it's probably going to work from now until the end of time. That's the way it used to be. Because we're in 2025, ending technical support means this. After this date, January 31st, 2026, several Wemo products will no longer be controllable through the Wemo app. Any features that rely on cloud connectivity, including remote access and voice assistant integrations, will no longer work. That's not how it's supposed to be. I have a thermostat, it's not the best thermostat in the world, but it has a local API option, which means that if Venstar decides that they are going to end support for this thermostat, I don't care. I can control this thermostat now, I can control this thermostat in 2035, I'll be able to control this thermostat in 2085 because it allows me local control. Just in case you were about to ask, what do I do with the device that I paid a professional electrician to wire into my electrical panel and screw into my wall? We recommend disposing of these devices at an authorized e-waste recycling center. A shit option. A slightly less shit option was provided by ReaderBot of Ars Technica. I recommend boxing them up and shipping them directly to a Belkin corporate headquarters. It's not going to make it work again, but it'll probably make you feel better. What really bugs me here is how much work you have to do to figure out if the device that you bought and paid for is something that's even going to work in four or five months. They have this list of devices that are going to be affected by the shutdown and devices that are still going to work. Absent from this list are several devices that I can find on their own fucking online store. If I go to Amazon right now, there is a Wemo Belkin store where I can buy devices and it says in all caps, works with Amazon Alexa, works with Home Assistant, works with Google Assistant, works with HomeKit. And when you click around onto some of the devices, you'll find stuff like this. This is a smart light switch second generation. You'll also find devices like this that are no longer for sale. With this one, it's pretty easy to figure out if it's gonna work again. I just search for the word model I take my model number, F7C030, I hit Control F in my browser, and I can see that that's in the list of items that's not going to work again. And then I go to this one over here, the Wemo Smart Light Switch Second Generation, and this one has a model number of GTY, part number GTY. There is no GTY on this list. There's nothing even close to GTY on this list. 
Maybe I can go by the title. The title of the product is Wemo Light Switch Second Generation. Second Generation, nothing there. Second, nothing there. If you type in V2, you'll find a Wemo Light Switch V2. Is Wemo Light Switch V2 same as Wemo Light Switch Second Generation? And we spent five minutes going back and forth trying to figure out which of these devices will and will not work, how to figure out the model number, the difference between Gen 2 versus V2, and all this other crap. I don't think you should have to be a private fucking investigator to figure out if what you're installing into your house and paying a licensed electrician to put in there is going to work five months after they're done with it. None of that even matters to begin with because even if it's one of the newer devices, it's still going to stop working someday because it requires their server connectivity. What doesn't require other server connectivity are devices that have local API options. Let's go over to the Nest thermostat. Starting October 25th, 2025, Google will no longer support the Nest Learning thermostat. Over the years, we've brought out new thermostats with even more ways to help you save energy and stay comfy. As part of our ongoing process to provide the best possible smart home experience, we are transitioning our thermostat infrastructure to a new platform offering significant advancements in performance, reliability, and features that will greatly benefit our customers. Unfortunately, we're not able to move our older thermostats to this platform. AKA, we're Google, and we're going to break your perfectly functional thermostat after buying the company that made it. Well, actually, it's not breaked. It's just, have you tried setting the schedule on device with this thing? What's the solution to this? Have a local API option. Watch what I can do with my Venstar thermostat. There is our thermostat. Menu. That took a couple of tries. Wi-Fi. Local API options. Come on, buddy. There you go. Third time's a charm. As you can see, you do have to pay your tribute to the freedom respecting or open source god. Anytime you're dealing with something that respects your freedom, you pay, whether it's with your time or with dealing with that fucking resistive touchscreen that they put in there from 1992. This is a fine product. It allows me to continue using it after they have stopped support. I can connect to Venstar servers, or you can do what I did with mine, where my thermostat doesn't even know what the date is because it's never been connected to the internet and never will. It works locally. When I connect to my Wi-Fi, I can then connect to the thermostat, or I VPN into my home network, and then I connect to it locally. Locally. My thermostat is not allowed to connect to the internet, like most smart devices in my house, and they still work just fine. There are pieces of software, like Home Assistant, that have support for all different types of lights, dimmer switches, chargers, thermostats, and everything else. And this is done open source by the community, so that you own access to what's in your house. And you have nice little interfaces like this that allow me to easily adjust the temperature of my thermostat from anywhere in the world. And they have nice phone interfaces for me to use it as well. People are going to code this on their own. They regularly do this work and reverse engineer it, whether we're talking about for Mazda or we're talking about for high air. Now, people are going to say, well, then customers are going to want customer support for all these things. And isn't that bad for our reputation? What do we do when a customer tries to set it up and it doesn't work? You can have this behind an advanced menu for advanced users. Enter password here. Anything after this menu, you get no customer support on. Now I know, after that, well, that's going to be bad for our reputation. Customers are going to be mad at us. You think they're not going to be mad at you when they have to pay an electrician or replace a light switch that they bought five months ago because you killed it? Really? I think that's going to give you some more reputational harm than not giving them customer service in the local API option. And further, when I hear people talk about safety and security concerns with Internet of Things devices, now that's a security issue when it's no longer supported to allow it to continue to work, it's on my home network. I, I don't have it connecting to the internet. Like the only way when I block this thing from going onto the internet for it to be a security issue is when it's still working 40 years from now, if the deep sea gotten good enough by then, I install the wrong one on my computer and it's got a virus on it and it connects to my thermostat and then fucking Samara from the ring jumps out of the thing while I'm trying to set it up or change the temperature. It'll be fine. Samara from the ring is not going to jump out from your fucking thermostat and try to kill you because you're running an unpatched Venstar. The sad thing is I wouldn't be surprised if an industry lobbyist actually used this in a commercial to describe what happens to Internet of Things devices when you're allowed to own them. I shouldn't say this shit out loud. I'm willing it into an existence. When you buy an Internet of Things smart product for your house, if you do not have access to a local API, in my opinion, you do not own that particular product. The company does, and they can turn it off at any given time. I am not a Luddite. I am not against having smart devices in my home. I have tons of smart devices in my home. But the distinction is that I own those smart devices in my home. They do what I want. I control them, not the manufacturer. And I see a lot of misplaced aggravation and hate towards the concept of smart devices. Why would I have to change the temperature if I come home two hours early and my air conditioner is not on because the schedule is that I'll just deal with it. I don't like that dichotomy because you're dealing with their framing. Have an old style inconvenience life or have a new convenience life but deal with our bullshit. There is an option that includes neither of those, which is be free, have a modern life, 
and use devices that don't try to control you. Use devices that allow you to control them. I am not going to go down the road of shitting on technology and not using devices and not enjoying innovation simply because the devices are made by people who are absolute guns. I think we should be able to hack into those devices and be able to do what we want with them. And when I see people like the gentleman who reverse engineered the Mazda API or the Hire API and allowed people access to what they bought and paid for, I applaud those people and I wish that they had reached out to me when they said that they got a letter from a lawyer because I would have happily paid for a lawyer to respond to the company in kind at no charge to them. I'm not kidding. I'm sick and tired of this shit. Mazda and Hayer have to know that you're not copywriting an API. And if they want to try and file DMCA takedown notices because somebody reverse engineered how an API works so that they can use their car or use their air conditioner in a manner that they wanted, fuck you. I'm willing to fight that shit and I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is. The next time somebody who goes after a home assistant developer sends them a DMCA takedown notice, I hope you let me know because there are a lot of provisions of the DMCA that need changing. Section 1201 is one of them. Section 1201 says that you can't break a digital lock on what you bought and paid for. Laws like this and restrictions like this are the primary reason that we all we are in the first place. We couldn't see 30 years ago that what we're creating is a world where we will own nothing. And I'm hoping that as every single video comes out, every single article on consumerrights.wiki, every single light switch in your house that no longer fucking functions, every time Belkin turns off a light in your house, I want it to turn on a light in your head. Become informed, become alert, get organized, and get to work. I'm going to do my part, but for me to do my part, I need you to do yours. Here's what me doing my job looks like. Number one, if somebody comes out with a way to get around future homes bullshit so that you can use those devices again the way you could before that fuckface CEO pushed out that ransomware firmware update, you will get a bounty of $5,000. If the community accepts your solution and says this works, this is good, 5,000 bucks. I pay my debts. Number two, if somebody goes after an engineer that comes out with a Home Assistant plugin for one of these things, and future Home of Belkin goes after them the way that Mazda and Hire went after those Home Assistant developers, I'm going to hire somebody to defend them. And we're going to push that case as far as it goes. We're going to set a precedent here that it's okay to hack your devices to get back the functionality that you bought and paid for, that you own what you bought and paid for, not the manufacturer, and we're going to make sure the legal departments and the CEOs of those companies have a bad fucking day. Does the CEO of Future Home want to learn what it's like to go bankrupt twice inside of six months? Because we can make that happen. Let's get to work. Here's what you do when your job looks like. You're going to make sure that I stay informed on these issues. You're going to email me when they come up. And above all, you're going to create consumerrights.wiki articles when they come up. You're going to improve those articles. If you see something and you think this could be better, you're going to do the work. You're going to make sure that I have a resource that I can show to legislators, to regulators, to reporters at the New York Times or National Review or major newspapers to get this issue as much press as humanly possible to push back against it. I am not going to own nothing and be happy. If I own nothing, I'm going to be very pissed. If I own things, I'm probably still going to be pissed, but I'm going to be a little bit happier. You guys are not going to be happy if you don't own anything. And I don't want to see you complaining in the YouTube comments. And I'm not just here to complain in the YouTube video. I'm here to clean up my corner of the world and create some real change. Are you willing to create that change with me? Do you want to put in the work? Do you want to put in the effort? Or do you want to sit here and complain? Because I want to own shit again. Do you? I'm a man of my word. You crack that future home shit? $5,000 just for you. They go after you? I hire your lawyer. Let's have fun. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now. And if you're the future home CEO and you're watching this, fuck you.